All right, so what about delta? Let me just try to sketch it. We need to look at an abstract space of functions. So this isn't just the usual space, like here's a point in phase space. I mean, this point represents the logistic map. This point represents the sign map. And maybe this is the logistic map for a particular value of R. As you change R, there's some one parameter family. In this infinite dimensional space of functions, it's hard enough to visualize 3D. Infinity is pretty rough. But we could still mathematically deal with it. So we're going to define an operator that operates in this space of functions. We'll call it T. And what it does is it maps functions to functions. So it takes points in this space and maps them to other points in this space. In some sense, it's a map on the space of functions. And here it is. We'll define it this way. T of f of x. So we take in that function and it gives us alpha f squared x over alpha. So for any function, you could define this. And we, you know, alpha is the same, alpha. From what we have said above, g, that g function, g is a fixed point of t in the space of all functions, right? Because g of x equals alpha two iterates of g on x over alpha. And you might wonder, OK, in analogy to what we've talked about, fixed points, this is a fixed point in an infinite dimensional space. What type of fixed point? Is it a stable fixed point? You might think, well, if everything's kind of going to this, it's a stable fixed point. It is, it is not. Just like the origin in the Lorenz system, it's a higher dimensional version of a saddle point. Right? If you linearize in an infinite dimensional space, what does this mean? So this means it has at least one unstable direction. and then stable directions. So maybe to see that G is a fixed point, look at what T does to G I. T operating on G I gives you G I minus one. Remember what G I was? G I is the, the universal function with a super stable two to the I cycle. So that means G I minus one is the universal function with a super stable two to the I minus one cycle. Uh, maybe you could see this if you just say, okay, let's take T of G1. T of G1, so this is something with a super stable two cycle, is alpha G squared of one X over alpha. Well, now we created a fixed point of a map. This thing will be a map with a fixed point, super stable map with super stable fixed point. So G0, but the same thing holds for all of them. And that's why we've got We've got this. So this is this is how the operator T uh, maps these universal functions one to another. I mean, I understand this is getting crazy. That's why it's just a sketch. So here now we can do a schematic of the picture in function space. We are building to what is delta? What is delta and where does it come from? And this is what's happening in function space. We've got things that look like surfaces, if you want magic carpets. This is at the parameter value of Ri. So th these are all of the maps with super stable two to the i cycles. So here would be like the logistic map. And let's just say, you know, abstractly, some direction in this space is corresponding to changing the parameters, parameter value of, of maps. So there's going to be another surface, and this will be you know, in some sense, a parallel surface, Ri minus one. These are going to be functions with a super stable two to the i minus one cycle. And here's the logistic map. And we can kind of keep on doing this, going all the way down to where things accumulate, R infinity. So these are now functions at the onset of chaos. And so the logistic map be somewhere in here. We could even write the whole family of logistic maps. There's this one dimensional curve. So that would be, let's call that the logistic family. And maybe there's other points that are corresponding to, you know, the sign map. On this surface, this R infinity surface, there is G. We've got G. So here is G, right? G is G infinity. And there'll be a G of I and G of I minus one. So we could even think of the universal family of functions. And 
why is it called universal? It's called universal because if you start iterating under T with any of uh, these as the initial point, so let's say here's the logistic map. If you start operating, then it'll take you to point after point after point, but it's going to be converging, right, as that, as we go on and on to G, the universal function. So there's this, uh, any and every function eventually under repeated iterates of T merges onto G. So it, it's a fixed point and it has all these stable directions, but it does have an unstable direction. The unstable direction is that if you have G I, it goes to G I minus one. This is from what I wrote up above that T of G I goes to G I minus one. So that corresponds to an unstable direction. So we've got two things going on here. We've got on this sheet, T maps all points, all functions on this sheet to G. So those are the stable directions. But then there's an unstable direction. There's a direction where things are going away. So G has a one-dimensional unstable manifold. If you want, it's just, it's the unstable direction. Things are going away. G as a fixed point has an infinite number of stable directions and one unstable direction. And if you think of the multiplier quantifying growth in that unstable direction, that is what is related to delta 4.6 something. Think of what we've said delta represents, the distance between these super stable cycles or distance between period doublings ends up being the same thing. As you approach G, so very close to G, like G 1 billion going to G 1 billion minus one, uh, the multiplier of growth is related to delta. So that's a sketch of where delta comes from. You could read more about it, but that's, that is the thumbnail sketch. And that is also, been experimentally shown. This has been experimentally verified. You could just look at period doublings and I'll just give an experimental summary of trying to measure delta in hydrodynamic and electronics uh, systems. And you notice they're getting within, um, like this means 4.3 plus or minus 0.8 in the last digit. So we're getting good approximations of this universal thing. So hopefully that gives you a good flavor for this renormalization theory. I think this is probably the most difficult material of the course. If you're hanging with me, then you know that's good. Next time we'll get into fractals.